In this lesson, we want to review factoring by substitution. So for most of you watching this, this is something you've done before. Basically, the idea here is that normally we work with trinomials and we factor those into the product of two binomials. And the trinomials that we're working with have a degree of two. In the scenarios we're going to look at today, this won't be the case, right? We're going to look at more complicated polynomials or more specifically, more complicated trinomials. So when you come across these, you generally are going to be given problems that allow you to factor them using a little simple substitution technique. So to cover this, if we have something like x to the fourth power plus 2x squared plus 1, notice that this 4 here, the larger exponent, is double that of the 2, okay? Normally, we're working with something like this. Let's say we had something like x squared plus 5x plus 6. We all know at this point this can easily be factored into 1. This first term here would be x. This first term right here would be x. So I need two integers that sum to 5 and give me a product of 6. That's 2 and 3. So plus 2 and plus 3. So very easy to factor. This is the typical scenario we're looking at. Notice that this 2 here is double that of the exponent of 1. This 4 here, again, is double that of the exponent of 2. So we have the same kind of format, the same pattern. And so when this occurs, we can just use a little substitution to make our factoring much easier. Okay, so the way we do the substitution technique is we let another variable, a lot of times you see u, you might see z, you might see q, pick whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna let that variable be equal to the variable raised to the smaller power. So in this case, the variable raised to the smaller power, we have x squared. So we're gonna say, let's let u be equal to x squared. And I'm going to rewrite this in such a way that it's clear where we need to replace things. x to the fourth power is x squared squared. Then plus, we'd have 2x squared, then plus 1. So in other words, I'm going to take and replace everywhere we have an x squared with a u, okay? Because u is equal to x squared. So down here, where we'd have x squared, I'm just going to put a u, and that's going to be squared. And then plus, we have 2x squared, so I'm going to put 2u. And then lastly, plus 1. So all I want to do is factor this guy, and it's pretty easy to do. I know the first term for each binomial would be a u, right? Because u times u would give me u squared. And then I just need two integers that sum to 2 and give me a product of 1. Well, the only possibility there is 1 and 1, right? 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so that works out. So you get u plus 1 times u plus 1, or u plus 1, that quantity squared. Now you're not done, okay? Because you want this in terms of x, because this is the variable you started working with in your original trinomial. So all I have to do is go back and resubstitute. So since u is equal to x squared, I can essentially, let me kind of scooch this down, I can just write this as x squared, right? Just plug in an x squared for u, plus 1 times, you'd have x squared, plus 1, or of course you could write that as the quantity x squared plus 1 squared. Let's move this down because it's kind of in the way. And let's move this up. So we'll say this is equal to this, right? And you can check this. Let me kind of scooch these up. You can check these if you want. x squared times x squared would be x to the fourth power. So that would give me that. The outer would be plus x squared. The inner would be plus x squared. So x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. So that's where we get that middle term. And the last, we have 1 times 1, which should give us 1. So checking this with FOIL, we see we got the correct factorization. All right, let's look at another example. So suppose we saw 7x to the fifth power minus 62x cubed minus 9x. At this point, you have a 5 and you have a 3 and you have a first power. This is not the normal pattern. But again, when you look at things and you're trying to factor, always ask yourself the question, can I pull something out before I start? Okay, I can obviously pull out an x here, and that would give me a 7x to the fourth power minus a 62x squared minus a 9. Okay, now this matches the format I'm looking for. I have the fourth power and I have squared. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put x times, inside of parentheses I'll have 7x squared squared, I'm just doing this for emphasis, minus 62x squared minus 9. And so I'm going to highlight this and this. And I'm just going to say, again, let's let u, let's let u be equal to x squared. Okay. So what I'm going to have is x times the quantity, 7u squared minus 62u minus 9. 
and I'm going to factor this. So let me let me erase this real quick. And I'll just write this off to the side. So let u be equal to x squared. All right, so to factor this inside, I'm going to go ahead and use the grouping method or the AC method. So give me two integers whose product is 7 times negative 9 or negative 63. So this is the product I'm looking for. And whose sum is negative 62. So that's the sum. Well, if I think about this combination here, really I'm going to be thinking immediately about negative 63 and positive 1, right? So negative 63 and positive 1. So I'm going to write this as 7u squared. I'm going to do minus 63u. I'm going to do plus u or plus 1u, however you want to write that, and then minus 9, okay? And then I'm just going to factor this using grouping. So I'd have x times, from the first group here, the 7u squared minus 63u, I can pull out a 7u. That would leave me with u minus 9. From this group here, I'm just going to pull out a 1, and that would leave me with u minus 9. And so what's going to end up happening is I have a common binomial factor of u minus 9. So that's going to come out. So I would have x times the quantity, 7u plus 1, times the quantity u minus 9. Okay. So let me erase all of this. We don't need it anymore. So now I'm just going to do some back substituting. I'm going to put this as equal to, I have x times the quantity, 7 times u is going to be x squared, plus 1, and then times, for u I'm going to have x squared, and then minus 9. Now, am I done? You might think that you're done, but you're not. You always want to look for opportunities to factor further. In this particular case, 7x squared plus 1, I can't do anything with that. Can't do anything with x, but x squared minus 9, what can I do there? That's the difference of squares, right? I have x, which is squared, minus basically 3 squared, right? 9 is 3 squared. So I can further factor x squared minus 9 as x plus 3, that quantity, times x minus 3. So we're going to erase this, and we're going to put the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 3, okay? And if you were to go through and do the multiplication here, you will end up with this 7x to the fifth power minus 62x cubed minus 9x. So very important that when you go through these problems, you look for additional factoring because if you would have left this as x squared minus 9 here, instead of factoring it further, that would be considered wrong, right? Because it's not completely factored. All right, let's look at another one. So we have 9 times the quantity x minus 4 squared plus 30 times the quantity x minus 4 and then plus 25. So this is another opportunity to use our substitution technique. Notice how we have this guy right here and this guy right here. This one is squared and this one is basically raised to the first power. So if I let this binomial x minus 4 be equal to a variable like u, I can factor using substitution. I'll have 9u squared, right? Just plug in a u where this is, plus 30u plus 25. Now, I'm going to factor this using the grouping method. So this will be equal to, I want two integers whose product is 9 times 25, or 225. So the product is 225, and whose sum is 30. So sum is 30. So 225, if I'm breaking that down, let me kind of get this out of the way real quick. Move this over here. 225, I know is 1 times 225, that's not going to help me. It would be 3 times 75, but that's not going to work. It would be 5 times 45, but that's not going to work. We could also do 9 times 25, but that won't work. And of course, we could do 15 times 15, and that would work, right? 15 times 15 is 225, 15 plus 15 is 30. So we found the two integers that we need, so let's erase all this. And let's go ahead and write this as 9u squared plus 15u plus 15u plus 25, okay? So now we can factor this using grouping. From the first group, I can pull out a 3u, and I would have a 3u plus a 5. From the second group, I can pull out a 5, and I would have a 3u plus a 5. So I've got this common binomial factor now that I can take out. So if I take that out, I would have... 3u plus 5 times the quantity 3u plus 5. Basically, 3u plus 5, that quantity squared. 
So let's go ahead and erase all this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace my u with my x minus 4. So I'm going to say this is equal to, you'll have 3 times x minus 4, make sure to use parentheses, then plus 5 times 3 times, again, inside of parentheses, x minus 4, and then plus 5. Okay. So let's see what we can do to simplify here. So 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 4 would be negative 12, and then you have plus 5. Over here, it's the same thing, right? So I just put 3x minus 12 plus 5. And of course, negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. So this ends up being 3x minus 7, this quantity times 3x minus 7. Or you could say the quantity 3x minus 7 squared, right? Either way. All right, let's take a look at one more of these. So we have 8 times the quantity x plus y raised to the power of 2z, plus 6 times the quantity x plus y raised to the power of z, and then minus 9. So this one's slightly more challenging than the one we just saw. What makes it more challenging is you have a variable in your exponent. So this kind of trips students up just a little bit. So the idea here is still the same. We're looking for that pattern, right? We have this 2z here, and we might as well say this is 1z or just z, right? So this guy, the larger exponent, is double that of the smaller. 2z is double that of just z. So again, if we see this pattern, we can use our little substitution technique. Now, what am I going to let my variable be equal to? Let's let u be equal to what? Well, to make this crystal clear, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to put this as 8 times the quantity x plus y raised to the power of just z. Let me kind of scooch this down for a minute. And then I'm going to raise this to the power of 2. Okay? So I haven't done anything illegal. Power to power rule would put me right back to this, right? Because this is my base. It's x plus y, that quantity. So I would take this exponent here, which is z, and I would multiply it by this exponent here, which is 2, which would get me back to the 2z, which I have there. Okay, so I haven't done anything illegal. Then plus, we have 6 times the quantity x plus y. This is raised to the power of z, and then minus 9. So... I'm going to take this guy right here, the whole thing, the x plus y, that quantity raised to the power of z, and that's what I'm going to let my variable u be equal to. Okay, so x plus y raised to the power of z. Okay, so I am going to have 8 multiplied by, take this whole thing and replace it with a u, and that guy's going to be squared, then plus, I'm going to have 6, replace this with a u, and then just minus 9. Let me kind of scooch this out of the way so we have some room to work. And so now I'm just going to factor this guy. 8u squared plus 6u minus 9. I'm going to just use my grouping method because that's easiest for me. So I want a product of what? 8 times negative 9 is negative 72. So negative 72 is the product. And I want a sum of 6. So 6 as the sum. So two integers that have a product of negative 72 and that have a sum of six. So again, I like to just work with positives and I work out the sign as I go. One and 72 wouldn't do anything for me. 36 and two wouldn't do anything. 24 and three would not do anything. Four and 18 wouldn't do anything. But when I get to six and 12, I can make that work, right? I need a negative product and a positive sum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the larger number in terms of absolute value be positive the smaller number in terms of absolute value be negative. So I would want a plus 12 and a minus 6. So I'm going to use that to rewrite this guy. So I'd have 8u squared plus 12u minus 6u minus 9. Okay. So I can erase this. I don't need any information anymore. And now I'm just going to factor using grouping. So over here, I know that in the first group, I can pull out a 4u. So I pull out a 4u. That would leave me with a 2u plus a 3. Over here, I know I can pull out a negative 3. That would leave me with a 2u plus a 3. So we have a common binomial factor here of 2u plus 3. I'm going to go ahead and factor that guy out. So this is going to give me the quantity 2u plus 3 multiplied by the quantity 4u minus 3. Okay. So I'm not done. Let me kind of erase all this. I don't need it anymore. And let me kind of just slide this up a little bit. So all I'm going to do is wherever I see a U, I'm going to plug this guy back in. So I'm going to say this is equal to, let me kind of slide this out of the way. 
So inside of parentheses, we're going to have 2 multiplied by, in place of u, I'm going to put x plus y raised to the power of z. So this has to be inside of parentheses because 2 is multiplying the whole thing. So x plus y, again, this is raised to the power of z, and then plus 3. And then I have another set of parentheses, 4 multiplied by, again, the same thing, I'm plugging in for u. So x plus y, this guy raised to the power of z, and then minus 3. Now, let me erase all this. I don't need any of this anymore. This is going to be my answer, right? This is what this guy factors into. So if you start with 8 times the quantity x plus y raised to the power of 2z, plus 6 times the quantity x plus y raised to the power of z, minus 9, this would factor into or give us an answer of we have the quantity 2 times the quantity x plus y raised to the power of z plus 3 multiplied by this quantity 4 times the quantity x plus y raised to the power of z, then minus 3. You can't make this any simpler. You can't really do anything else. The reason is, is because the exponent here and here is a z, right? It's not a number where you can kind of do some other things. Z, we don't know what it is. It just represents some unknown. So this is as simple as we can make this.